is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make a couple of necklaces and some earrings. I'm not going to do the earring completely on camera here, but it's exactly the same process as the tassel here. So you're going to be able to make a matching set of earrings and two necklaces. These can be worn together or separately. These earrings can be worn with this necklace also. This would turn out really pretty if you layered the two pieces, made them length so that you could layer them nicely. They work really well together. Anyway, this is a pretty simple process. It's using the Sparkling Romance treasure bag however a lot of these things are on my website so you can go check that out if you want some or just find something really similar in your stash let's go ahead and get started okay for this project today I will be designing a necklace from the sparkling romance treasure bag however if you did not get the treasure bag you can still use this video for inspiration or as a techniques video because you can use things that are very similar and come up with something very similar. So what we're going to be using today is we're going to be using the heart pendant that came in the treasure bag. This is electroplated glass and it's really a very pretty pendant and I do have some of these left over so I will post a link in the description box beneath the video player or you can just go to the website ggctreasures.com and check out whatever I have left over I will be posting as I make these videos so you may find some of the things that you would like to have on the website so we're going to be using this pendant then we're going to be using some of the bead cones that came in the bag there's 12 of them we're going to be using four of them today we're going to be using four of, I think they're 9 by 13 bicone crystals. So we're going to be using four of them. Five came in the bag. We're going to be using some of these 4 by 3 little um, rondelle crystals that are lavender, half silver. We'll be using a few of those. We're going to be using some of the 6 by 4 per lavender paint crystals that came in the bag. And we're going to be using some of the seed beads that came in the bag. Now, whether you got Sweet Blush or you got um, Silver Lined Pink like this one, either one will work beautifully and they'll look just fine on this particular necklace. Um, we're also going to be using one of the cylindrical alloy beads that came in the treasure bag. I just need one. And then we're going to use one of the clasps that came in the bag. We're also going to be using two pieces of chain. So I've cut two four inch pieces of the chain that came in the treasure bag. And you can use any chain you would like. So if you're just following along as a techniques video, just know that when you cut your chain, that is what's going to determine the length of your necklace. So you can cut more or less. I'm going to make a 20 inch necklace because of this style that I am going to be making. Um, you want it to hang a little bit lower on your chest, really high up because of the length of the bead caps. It can look kind of boxy. So this is to be a little bit longer necklace. We're going to be using two crimp tubes. This is Belon and it's the silver tone and it's number two and we'll be using two of those. We will be using 17 inches of soft flex medium beading wire. Of course, you can use any beading wire you want. This is medium diameter. You can use fine if you'd like, but the medium works better for this particular design. The diameter is 0 0.019 inch or 0.48 millimeters. Just use something close in size and two jump rings to attach our clasping to the chain. And these are about five millimeter round jump rings. So let's go ahead and get ready. So I'm gonna push all this stuff aside and we'll get started. Okay, to start this project, like I said, I've cut 17 inches of medium soft flex. Now, that may seem a little bit too much as you're making this necklace. However, the issue with this particular design I'm doing is in centering it. So if you don't get it perfectly centered, you have enough wire to trim one of the ends off 
and you also have enough to come through your crimping really well. So I recommend that much. If you watch it and you decide you don't need that much, then you can adjust the amount that you've cut. I'm going to take my little cylindrical bead and slide it down. You can use any bead that you would like. You can also use just a few seed beads and that is just going to be the center to put over to put our um, pendant over. So I'm going to slide one of those down and then I am going to put a seed bead on either side. So I'm using an 80 seed bead and I'm using the pink lined. Of course you can use the pink the sweet blush also it will be just fine. So we're going to put both of those on, center it somewhat, and then we are going to take one of our tube beads. Now if it's wrinkled up and weird you can kind of mold these, use your little pliers, change them up, make sure that they're not bent, but you want one of these. And then you're going to slide it down onto your wire. Now because these are filigree it wants to go through the filigree and get trapped and do all kinds of weird things. Just drop it down the best you can without getting it through the filigree there. And then because it is filigree and because the wire likes to slip through the joint here, we are going to put some beads on the inside of this and then use it with our larger bicone as a bead cap. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide down three of these four by threes or four millimeter rounds. I don't remember which it is, but it's either and either will work. I think it's four millimeter round actually. So we're going to slide three of these down and I'm just kind of holding things centered and um, I'll have to recenter it several times, but I'm just going to kind of hold it centered and see when you lift this it gets trapped. So um, I put three of those in and then I'm going to use one of my six by fours inside there also. You can see these through the filigree too so it does make it kind of pretty but it also helps hold the next bead up. So then I'm going to take one of my um, big bicones and I'm going to drop it down. And before I try to mold that around my bead, I am going to drop my pendant. It's got all blurry. I'm going to drop my pendant down onto the cylindrical bead here. Just like that. My oils from my hands always blur it up. There we go. Now, at this point, I'm going to put my two ends together. I'm going to center it the best I can. And like I said, with these bead caps, centering is kind of an issue. So just get it the best you can get centered by putting your two ends together. And we have excess so we can cut it to make sure that it's centered also. You just don't want one side really short compared to the other. Now I've got this huge <laughs> clothespin because I can't find my little bead stopper thing and I'm going to put it on this end. Now any kind of clip, anything that you can put on this end to kind of hold your beads together will be very helpful at this point. And now I'm going to just kind of push this bicone down into this cone and then I'm going to squeeze it around it. I don't want it to be down in there too deep. So I want to squeeze it and narrow it a little bit so that my bead isn't completely buried in it. Now, And once you do this, it sticks in there pretty good. So I'm just kind of squeezing it around the beads and then I'm going to squeeze the top in. And for the moment, that's good enough. I don't want it to be buried too deep. Okay. Now, once I have that in there, then I am going to pick up an 80 seed bead. And then I'm going to pick up one of my 6x4 purple crystals. And then I'm going to pick up another 80 seed bead. And then I'm going to pick up another one of my big bicones. Slide it down. 
Then I'm going to grab another one of these cone beads. And this one, like I said, this one is kind of bent out, so I'm just going to shape them up. And again, whoops, before we do that, let's put our other beads on. So we need a 6x4. And then we need three of these little guys, our four millimeter rounds. Drop them down. Now we're going to slide our bead cap over those beads. So try to get around the filigree and your bead wire is going to go through it a million times. And once you get all the way through, then you're just going to have to guide it down over these beads. And this is where having something to hold your beads helps a lot. So I'm going to recenter because my clip moved. And that is the issue with this particular design is centering. It's just not easy to do with these cone beads. I'm going to center it the best I can. And then I'm going to put this back on. Let's see, maybe I have I have this little clip. Let's see if this works any better. I'll put that there. And then I can kind of gently push it all together because if you push it too much, you're just going to knock your clip off. But I can push it together and then I will gently pull this down over the beads and mold it around that bicone. And now I have a little tension here and it should stay put pretty well. Mold it around like that. And then I can go ahead and do the other side. So I'm going to take this off, make sure you're centered at least to a point. Now I'm going to show you, because when you do this, see how I got off centered by about an inch. That's why we want a little extra, because once you get it on here, it's kind of difficult to recenter. I'm going to try by just pulling it together like this, and that's a little better. Now I'm going to put the clip on this side and I am going to drop a cone down from the narrow side and just put it through, trying to get past all that filigree, push it down. And then I'm going to pick up three of my little four millimeter round beads here and drop them inside the tube. And like I said, the reason I'm doing that is, as you can see, my wire keeps wanting to slip. Let me get you in closer. My wire keeps wanting to slip out of between the prongs and the, and then there's a, like a, a seam here. So <clears throat> this kind of helps fill that up and keep that from happening. And it's also pretty inside there. You can see the reflection of the purple. You can kind of see it through the filigree, so it's pretty. So I'm going to drop these three down, and then I'm going to drop a 6x4. And push this all down. And then I'm going to grab one of my bicones. I'm going to try to position the pretty reflective side out. And here I have to push this in. So you want to be you want to make sure that stays clipped and you want to be kind of gentle because you don't want to mess up your whole centering again. Get that in there as nicely as you can. Like I said, you don't want to bury it too deep so you can kind of squish this together, make it narrow so that you have as much of that bead sticking out that you want and then just kind of push the little um, prongs around it. They are somewhat adjustable so you can open them up a little and put a little bit bigger bead inside there too. And then we're going to pick up a seed bead and see if you'll actually stay in there. Come on dude, get in there. I'm not going to lie, these bead cones are kind of a pain in the butt to work with. Uh, you know, and like this end is a little flat, so I'm going to kind of make it a little rounder. There we go. 
and then we're going to pick up an 8-0 and a rondel and an 8 and then a bicone and then another one of our cones and this time well not yet no I almost did it again guys we are going to first put on our beads this time instead of dropping them inside we are going to put the bead cap over it so we'll pick up the six by four and then we'll pick up the three four millimeter rounds and put them on and then we are going to put on the bead cap like this and again you have to kind of push it on there so you want to make sure that you don't mess everything up on this side. I'm going to push it on. And that one went on really nice. So it's be it's behaving better. There we go. So this is what it looks like so far. And now I am going to just kind of move this over. We're going to go ahead and crimp one side and um, we're going to put a few more beads here and we're going to crimp one side then the other side will be able to get a lot of tension on it and crimp it down so let's do one side here we are going to pick up an 8 seed bead and then three of our 6 by 4s 6 by 5 whatever they are we're going to drop them down and that one's not a rondelle I don't know what it is but it's not the right shape so let me get three of these and then I'm going to pick up this one and so I've got an 8 0 three six by fours an 8 0 and now I am going to pick up a four millimeter round and then I'm going to repeat in reverse an 8 0 and then three more of my purple beads And there's that one that's round and not rondelle. It just keeps just sneaking its little way back in here, and I don't want him. There we go. Now, this is the way I want to end it, right like this. You can make this longer. You can bead the whole thing with more beading wire, whatever you would like. But I would just like this much because I find that this works better if the chain part goes up around your neck. It just lays nicer. So... I have dropped another 8-0 on here, and this is what I have. And now I am going to get a crimp tube, and I am going to drop a crimp tube down. And then I'm going to switch over and do this side. So I've crimped this one on, or I've used my clip. And now I'm just going to do this side the same way. And like I said, we can tighten everything up when we crimp. So I am going to go ahead and pick up my 8-0 and my three purple beads. There's that round guy again. I don't know. Okay, one, two, three. And then an 8 a 4 millimeter round, an 8 and then three rondelles, and then an 8 and a crimp tube. Okay. 
now. I'm pretty well centered. I have enough to do my crimping on either side perfectly. So I don't have to clip anything off or anything because I have enough. Now, if one end was way long or something, I might clip it down. But this is pretty well centered and I have enough to work with. So I'm going to work with one side, leave the other side clipped. I am going to pick up my chain. Make sure your last link is nicely closed. I cut mine. I didn't open them. So it should be nice and closed. And I'm just going to slide it on the wire. And then I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to go back through the crimp tube, the 80, and the first rondelle. I'm going to hold on to the side that doesn't move. On one side you can see moves as I pull on it. The other side is stable. I'm going to hold on to the stable side. Once it gets really small, I'll hold on to this bead and I'm just going to pull this as tight as I can around that chain. I don't want any movement at this point. And then I'm going to grab my flesh cutters and I'm going to cut this very close to the bead that it's coming out of. Just like that. Then I am going to give myself a little adjustment here by pushing down on the crimp tube and that will bring up whatever's sticking out between the beads on the end of the beading wire will go up into the beads. So I'm just going to push this down just a little bit and now I have a little loop that has some movement. But it's holding everything in place for me. So now I can grab my crimping tool and in the second divot, the one closest to the handle, I will imagine where the two beads are lying next to each other and put my second divot centered right between those two wires. And then I will squeeze. And now, as you can see, I have encased both sides of the wire in little tubes. Now I'm going to use the first divot on my crimping tool and I'm going to place the crimp tube in here sideways so that those two little tubes touch either side just like this and I'm going to squeeze. And now I have a very nice crimp, very secure. And you don't see any of my wire because it's up into the bead. The process that I showed you works very nicely. So now we can do the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure everything is how we like it. We're going to push it all together tight because everything has to stay together nice and tight on this. So we want some tension on this. Make sure it's all good. There's no slack. And then we are going to grab our chain and make sure your chain is shut. That side looks a little open. We'll use this side. And then we are going to just bring it back around. Get you in closer. We're going to bring it back around into the crimp tube, trying to lay it right next to the other side of the wire so they're parallel. And then I am going to slide through the 80 and through the rondelle. And then I'm going to hold on to the stable side. I'm going to pull the moving side. And then I'm going to grab onto the beads and pull as tight as I can. I'll be there in a minute. And then I am going to cut as close to the rondelle as I possibly can, like that. And now you can see there's a tiny little bit of wire sticking out between those beads. I can just gently push this um, crimp tube down just a little bit, giving a little bit of slack. And I can compare it to the other side, make sure the loops are about the same size, just like this. And then I will grab my crimping tool. Now you don't want to pull on anything because it's just laying in there. But it should, if you're using medium size, it should lay in there nice for you. 
and so you can work. Now I'm imagining where the middle of those two wires are, placing my crimp tool in the middle, and then I'm just going to squeeze. So that's the second divot closest to the handle. And now I have two little tubes encasing both of those wires, just like this. Now I'm going to use the first divot, place that in there sideways so that the two little tubes are touching the tool, and then squeeze again. And now I have a very nice, secure crimp. And Come on, you. All we have to do now is put on our clasp. So we need our clasp and a couple jump rings. And I seem to have misplaced mine. So I'll be back in two seconds and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so now I found my jump rings. They were there, I just wasn't seeing them. So we're just going to open a jump ring and put on this clasping and this necklace will be finished and we can try making something else so my opening is here I'm going to place my pliers on either side and just twist it open just like this and then I'm going to pick up the end of the chain and put the jump ring on the chain then put my clasp through the loop like this and then I'm just going to twist the jump ring back just like I opened it and make sure that you get it closed tightly and then we'll do the other side the same way just drop the other end on and close the jump ring again and then we can look at what we have and like I said you want this to be a little bit longer so that all this goes up around the neck and over the collarbone and this is a little lower on your chest otherwise it just kind of hangs kind of boxy um, if you like that look, that's fine, but I find I found that making it a little bit longer made it hang a little bit nicer. So that's what that looks like, and I think I will figure out something else to make. Okay, so I've decided to show you how to make a tassel set of earrings and necklace. Now, you can always do something else different for the earrings also if you'd like, but I'm going to be using chain. Now, it's possible that with the other necklace and with this necklace that you may not have quite enough chain. See, I have little bags all over the place and I grab it and I don't use just one, so I can't tell you that it's exactly the same. However, I do have more of this chain online if you want more or just use something else. Or in your previous necklace, you can just bead all the way up and use all the chain for this necklace if you'd like or <clears throat> instead of making the back of this necklace completely chain you can bead it you can do lots of things but what your remaining chain that you have you want to go ahead and start with the tassels first and then you can move into the back of the necklace and do it however you would like just to make sure you have enough chain. And again, like I said, you can always get more chain or you can use some from your stash, whatever you'd like. So, <clears throat> I'm going to be using some chain and some of the 6x4 rondelles, some of the bead cones, uh, another clasp, a couple ear wires, a couple jump rings, and I have a 7 inch piece of 20 gauge wire. I also have a couple of head pins that I'll, or eye pins that I'll be using just to help me cut my chain and measure things. <clears throat> so we're going to get right into this. So the first thing you're going to do is I have seven inches of chain or excuse me of wire and you can always use a little less if you'd like but 
I always use a generous portion because I want to make sure I have enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm just going to make like a really long eye pin out of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am just going to go about, um, let's see, about a quarter of an inch down on my wire here and I am going to just bend it over, straight over like that. Now, this is going to make a decent sized loop, so I may even cut that down just a little bit, just to make sure that my loop is not huge. And then I am going to grab my uh, round nose pliers, and I'm going to go about the middle of it, because I want a decent sized loop here, and I'm going to start to turn as far as I can. And once I have turned as far as I can, I'm going to take my pliers out, just flip my hand over, put them back in, and continue to turn until I get a nice little loop. Now I'm going to center it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not going to see this loop, but it, you need to make sure that it's closed. So I went ahead and overlapped a little bit, which is fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it inside of one of my cones to make sure that it'll slide down inside the cone pretty well. And it does, just like that. So now I'm just going to set this aside. And then we're going to cut some chain. So the first thing we want to do is we want to measure how long we want each segment of our tassel to be. So I am going to grab my chain and I'm going to measure one piece inside my cone just to know how long I want my tassel to be and then I can cut the rest of the pieces to match. So I'm going to take my little piece of wire that I made and I am going to slide the chain on it. And you're not going to put it inside the loop, you're just going to slide the chain on it, just like this. Then you're going to grab your cone and you're going to put it inside and just see how much length you need to get the tassel you want. So I'm going to, I think I want my tassel to be right about there, the end of it. It's going to extend even a little bit longer because once we get all the chain on here, it's not going to go as far in the cone and you're going to have a dangle on the end. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut my chain right about there. So I'm just going to cut it and then I'll tell you how long it is. Take this off of my wire. And you can open links instead of cutting them to, these are open links. You can do that if you want to save some chain. And let's see, I have got about an inch and a half, I think, of chain, inch and three quarters. Now I have two inches of chain. so. That's what I have cut on my first one. Now I'm going to take just a regular eye pin and I'm going to slide this chain on it and then I'm going to grab my longer length of chain and um, I am going to measure five lengths exactly the same as the first. So I'll put this on the, on the um, head or the eye pin also. I can stretch it out. You can hold it up too if you'd like, but I can't do that right now to show you guys. But you just want to find exactly the same length. So this link here is the one I need to cut. So I'm now going to cut it. And now I have two exactly the same pieces of, well, actually I was a length short. So I'm going to cut, oh, let me see. my. Yep, I'm going to cut one link off. And like I said, you can hold these up and designate which link you want to cut. I can't do that at this point or you won't be able to see what I'm doing. But now they're the same. And I can continue making three more because I want five tassels. You can make as many or as few as you like. You just have to make sure that they're going to fit inside your cone. So <clears throat> I'm going to go with five. I think that you could probably safely get maybe two more than that. You could get seven more if you want it really full 
or not seven more. You can get seven in total if you would like it really full. So I'm going to continue cutting my pieces of chain just like this until I have five and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have cut all five of my pieces and I've just left them on the little head pin here and I'm just going to scoot it aside. <clears throat> now we're going to make five beaded dangles to put on the chain. So we're just going to do a wrap. Now some people can very easily wrap their little beads right onto the chain, but we're going to make the wraps and then we're going to open the links and drop it on because I think that's a little bit easier for most people. So what we're going to do is I have these little ball head pins. I'm going to drop one onto one of my rondelles and get you a little closer here. I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I want a small loop so I'm staying towards the front of my pliers and then I'm going to just put my plier right above the bead and then bend the wire over the back little prong of the pliers here. So you'll notice my hand is flat and parallel to the bead mat. Then I take my plier and I move my hand more vertical and up and down now. And now my um, pliers, the top rung is right here above the wire. I'm going to bring the wire over the top of it. And when I get it all the way over in like right angle weave, weave, <laughs> beating on the brain, in a right angle, then I am just going to turn my wrist, turn my hand, and bring my hand more flat and parallel to the bead mat while bringing the wire underneath the plier. Now if I take this off here you can see I have a little loop. And my loop is a little off center so I'm just going to grab one side of it and push it over. I'm then going to grab a pair of pliers and hold the loop in those pliers. I'm going to then make sure that I arrange that wire in kind of the same angle as the pliers I'm holding on to. And then I can grab another pair of pliers and start to turn. I'm doing kind of messy wraps, meaning that I'm not necessarily making sure each coil goes perfectly under the next. So I'm wrapping it coiled and then I'm going to come back up into the middle a little and make kind of a messy wrap because I find that it's easier to cut the wire and these little tiny wires that I'm using it's just easier to handle if I come back up and then my wires up here and I can get to it easier to cut it off so like this and then I can grab my pliers and squeeze that little extra piece in. Now this is really tiny wire and it's kind of hard to work with so I always tend to distort it a little. There we go. Just like that. So now we want to have five of these little loops and I, or five of these looped components and then we're going to grab our chain. I'm going to take a piece of chain off and I am going to grab one of the links on the very end here and you can see the opening on the link here it's right there I am going to grab another pair of pliers open it grab one of my little loops pop them on there and close it just like that now you have a little angle. I'm going to do that to all five of my pieces of chain and then we'll be back. Okay so I put all my beads onto the chain. Now I'm going to grab the piece of wire I prepared with a loop on the bottom here. Now I am going to make sure that my loop isn't too big I'm going to try this all together first and if it's fine then I'll just continue but if you have happened to make too big of a loop or something isn't working right you can always come back and adjust this if you try it first so what we're going to do instead of opening this loop and dropping these on to the loop we're going to drop them over the loop the loop is just going to be our stop because when you put them all on a loop like this they lay kind of linear but when you drop it over the top of the loop and then slide it into your cone, you get a cascading effect and it makes them fall a little bit nicer 
in a more round kind of shape. So what I'm talking about is I'm going to take my piece of wire and I'm going to grab each of my links with the, my little bobble on the bottom here and on the very end link I'm just going to drop it on to the um, wire and drop it down to the loop instead of opening the loop and putting it on. Just drop them on. So I'm going to take each one and just put them on there. I know this seems a little weird, but every time I've made a dangle like this um, or a tassel like this, I don't like the way they lay. So last night I figured out that if I drop them over the top of the circle instead of putting them in the circle, then when I hold it up, they're not laying in a line. They're actually laying circular the way that I want them to look. So now I have all of them on the wire. And then I'm going to take my cone and try this on, make sure everything will fit inside. Now, sometimes you have to move these little guys back a little bit and the chain is going to um, kind of smush up into them. So you can move them back just a little. I'm going to leave mine alone for the moment. I'm going to get my chain how I want it to look. And then I'm going to slide straight up into the cone. Now, this is what I was talking about. The chain will try to come up between the little prongy things on here. So what you have to do is just pull them out. Sometimes you have to move it with your plier a little bit and pull it out. Everything fits really good, so I'm going to continue. If it didn't slide up there nice, if something was happening to impinge it, then I would change something, but this is working very well. So I'm just gonna slide this back up in here and then make sure my chain, I had it all beautiful and then I had to go and mess with it. So here is what I'm talking about. It gets trapped, so I'm just gonna open this and let it drop back down and then make sure they're all in the center and not sticking out of the side. And then I'm just going to push these little prongy things kind of down and around so that they don't grab clothes and do weird things. Just kind of close it around my chain like this, very gently. You can do more after you get it situated. If I get going too crazy, then my wire is going to slide because I have to hold it here right now. <coughs> Excuse me, goodness. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my plier right above the cone and I am going to bend my wire over the back, just like I showed you in the last loop. So I'm holding my hand parallel to the bead mat. Let's back off a little bit. And so it's flat and um, parallel to the bead mat. Now I'm going to turn my whole hand vertical. So now my pliers are up and down. And then I'm going to take my uh, wire over the top prong of the plier. Then I'm going to start to turn my wrist as I grab that wire and turn my wrist parallel again, flat to the bead mat and draw the wire underneath. And now I have a loop like this. Now I'm going to grab this loop and hold on to it. I'm going to position my wire so it's at the same angle as my plier and I'm just going to start turning. This is soft wire and I have a lot of it so I can just turn it with my hand. And I'm just going to turn until I kind of come down around that bead cone and make everything as neat as I can. I think I'm going to try to work my way back up, do a messy wrap. Yeah. So this is just a messy wrap. You can do a very neat wrap if you'd like, a very perfect coil, or you can do a messy wrap. I find that on the edge of this, when you wrap over the edge of it, it kind of makes a little gap there, so I've just compensated by doing a messy wrap. You can do the wrap any way you'd like. Some people hate messy wraps, some people love them. It's completely up to you. I have to do anything the way I do it if you don't want to. Now, we're gonna cut this off. 
and tuck it in the best we can. And now you have a really pretty little tassel. It's like this. My wrap is a little crazy, but that's all right. I'm not going to worry about it. It's a crazy wrap. But this is really pretty. I mean, when it jangles, it's, it's really cute. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab two pieces of chain. Now I've cut two longer pieces. You can string this with beads. You can do whatever you'd like. I am well aware that I may be using more chain than I put in the bag. You can use any kind of chain you want. You can use whatever you'd like. And if you make just one necklace instead of the one I made before and this one, then you should have enough. So it's up to you. So I'm going to measure here. And I have about nine and a half inches. So I'm making a little over, well, right around a 20 inch necklace for this because again it's a tassel I wanted a little lower on my chest so I'm making my chain that long you can adjust yours to any length you want now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end length link here and I'm going to open it oops I opened it on the wrong side there. Okay, so let me put it back together. All right, so I've just opened the very end link here. And then I am going to put it on to my wire here. So the little loop that I made with my wire. And if, you know, you have an issue with that, if your wire is a little thick or whatever, you can put a jump ring and then put it on there. But I'm just going to put my chain directly on here. Just like that. And then I'm going to open the other one and do the same thing. So, let me find my opening this time. And then I'm going to put it on this side and close it. Oh, come along, little thing. Make sure they close nicely. And then I can just grab a jump ring and open it. So again, position it in your pliers. The opening is here. Grab another pair of pliers and just twist it open like that. And then grab your clasp, drop it on, grab, grab your last link of chain, make sure it's closed well, the chain I mean, and pop it on, the jump ring, perhaps. Come here you little thing, you. There. And then I'm going to just close the jump ring. Just twisting it back the opposite direction from which I opened it. And again, let's do that again. Okay. Now, I'm not going to show you how to make the earrings. I, I am going to talk you through it and show you one really quickly. And then I'll make the other one off camera and come back and show you everything I've made simply because this is going to be a very long video and it's exactly the same process. I want you to see my necklace first here. This turned out really, really, really pretty. I mean, just, just very pretty. I love it. And when you hold it up, of course, it dangles really pretty. I made another one last night and I'll show it to you. So a lot of times I like to make two just to make sure that what I'm doing works every time. Oh, my chain is all tangled. Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You know, uh, there. <laughs> and so you can see this one is a little bit longer dangles than this one. So you can make it any way you want. And I was brutalizing it, so let me get it all better. So this one has a little bit longer dangles than this one. So you can do it however you would like to do it. Now, 
let me show you the earring situation here. You are going to make your earrings exactly the same way that you've just made your tassel here. However, if you don't want them to be quite as long, you can make your chain shorter. So you're still going to make five pieces of chain. You're still going to cut them exactly like I showed you. You're still going to put your little bead on exactly like I showed you. You're just going to use shorter pieces of chain so that you don't have quite as long of a dangle if you don't want to. If you want a long dangle, fine. But if you want a shorter one, because this is a lot of length for an ear. So if you want a shorter one, then you will make your piece of wire exactly like I showed you, put on one of your pieces of chain and just judge how long you want it and then cut each chain from that. Same way you did for the necklace, you will do for the earrings. And you will wrap the wire exactly the same and then you're just going to pop an ear wire on it instead of putting on um, the chain. So it's exactly the same process no reason to be redundant. I'm going to make one more of these and I will come back and show you everything we've made and we'll call it a day. Okay, I wanted to show you a really quick trick. I'm making my earring. However, I find as I pull it up in the into the cone, it's a little bit short, the tassels are. So you can do this with your necklace too. I've just dropped a couple of rondelles onto the wire after I've dropped the um, dangles over the top of the wire. So then I can just put on my bead cone right over those beads. You can see how pretty it is through the filigree and it also gives me a little bit more length. Without using a ton of chain, I've gotten a lot more length on my dangles. So you can also do that trick. You can do it on the necklace and you can do it on the earrings if you need to. It and it, it's a nice little helpful hint. So just wanted to let you know that. Okay, so here are the pretty pieces we have made today. And um, they really didn't take a whole lot of time. There's just, you know, patience in making sure that everything goes together the way you like, but they really are quite simple pieces and they go together fairly quickly. And here's the pair of earrings I made to go with the tassel. And like I said, though I didn't show you, it's exactly the same process. So all you have to do is make him, the tassels a little shorter and put on the ear wire. So that's what that looks like. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will be back with more very soon. And if you would like to see some more, then consider subscribing, hitting the um, notification bell, and perhaps give me a like if you want to. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>